You should now be standing on the corner of 4th Street at Albert Place. The black water pump we saw earlier should be to your left, and the main road should go up the hill in front of you. So, cross the River Orr, and that's the stream we walked along earlier, and to your right you'll see the St Clair's Catholic Church. Carry on to where you see that parking sign for the church car park, indicating right. We ourselves are turning left there, and head up Queen's Head Alley. What's that, lions and tigers? Actually, we'll be hearing later that lions and tigers did indeed once roar all night on the Market Hill. But a few centuries ago, had you been walking here, the animals you would most likely have seen were bears. Now, there was once an inn here on the left called the Blue Boar, built sometime in the late 1400s. And in the hateful days when people paraded bears for public entertainment, the poor animals would be found sleeping here outside the pub in the outhouses. The narrow passageway ahead was quite possibly the toll entrance for Framlingham in the distant past. It's free to pass through these days, of course, so welcome to Market Hill. OK, I admit it, the grandeur of the square is somewhat blocked by the Indian restaurant, but just walk around it to the right and feast your eyes on all there is to see here. Now you know how annoying it is on television just when something interesting happens and everything stops for an advert? Well, I'm about to inflict an advert on you myself. Well, fast forward if you want to, but bear with me if you can, because it's very relevant to the tour. I'm talking about the new book by John Bridges. It's called The Commercial History of a Suffolk Town, and it has a great deal of information about many of the shops you can see now, back in Victorian times. He was able to write it when an acquaintance of his showed him some original bills and invoices that had been in the family for a hundred years. And John Bridges noticed a familiar name. This wasn't for my father, it was for my great-grandfather. And this account was in pristine condition. It was just amazing. And he said to me, he said, well, my son Jim, he said, he's got a few more if you'd like to go and see him. And oh, what a classic bit of Suffolk understatement that was, because uh, I had no idea what he meant. But when I did eventually get round to it, there was something like seven black bin liners just heaving with all this material. I just couldn't believe it. This treasure trove has enabled him to put together a very valuable book that's well worth buying especially if you want to learn more about Framlingham. And it's stocked, surprise, surprise, in Victoria Bell's second-hand bookshop. We've been here nearly 30 years. It's got a stock of, sort of, say, I don't know, eight, ten thousand books, starting at cheap paperbacks, going on to more expensive hardbacks and some antiquarian old stuff. Uh, we try and have something in here for everybody. Part of the pleasure of having a second-hand bookshop, though, is seeing what goes on outside. It's great fun, quite entertaining at times. Mm -hmm. What sort mm. of things do you see? Um, well, a lot of near accidents with cars, that's a big thing. Um, just a lot of people milling about, enjoying themselves, the market, um, people sitting outside the goat having coffee in the sun. Which leads us neatly to one of the great attractions of Framlingham, the Saturday market. Overnight all the parked cars magically disappear and replaced by a lively bunch of people and stalls. And sometimes we even get itinerant musicians. It's obviously very busy and I think the market on Saturday morning is now is very much a great social occasion in Framlingham. Everybody goes down and has coffee in the crown and at the Dancing Goat Cafe and so on and they walk about. I don't know how much trade is done. I'm sure there's enough for the traders, but it's a, it's a good social occasion. Yeah, it is a good market. It brings in a lot of people from quite a wide area. Um, and again, that's a social thing as well as, as a food buying exercise. Um, and it seems to be enjoyed by everybody. And, um, you know, there are some good stalls selling some good local produce, uh, plants, eggs, as well as all the sort of meat and things. So, you know, it's a good mixed market and people enjoy it. My name's Darren Smith and I'm the uh, fishmonger on Framlingham Market. 
I'm the market supervisor, uh, just uh, sort the market out, tell people where to go, collect the rents, etc. Yeah. All the fish comes from low stuff, but it comes from all around the world. I mean, um, I'll try and buy local where I can. Um, there's not so much local fish now. I mean, the low stuff is a port shrinking all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the fish does come from other ports, Scarborough, Grimsby, Scotland, yeah. all around the country. Aaron also comes to Fram every Tuesday for the smaller morning market. And he always has a tremendous selection of aquatic goodies. Just the basics like cod, haddock place, um, skate, dogfish, and then the more exotic fish like tuna, um, red snapper, which comes from the Maldives, um, Indian Ocean King prawns. OK, so what about those lions and tigers? This is really memories from George Cooper, who lived in the town for many years, and he recalled as a, as a young boy when he lived uh, just on the Market Hill, when the circus came to town, this is really the, the, the most exciting thing for a, for a young boy. He said because the marquee was set up, which covered pretty much the whole of the Market Hill, he said, and on one side there'd be the showman steam engines that were powering away all the time, producing the light and the power for everything else. And also, he said they had, of course, the circus animals. So he said there would be lions and tigers and things like that in their cages. And he said that they would roar throughout the night. And he said, I, I just never slept all the time they were there. Um, I think we're going back to the 1990s. All of that was organised by the family and WI. So they raised the money for it. They commissioned the designer, who was Mary Moore, who has designed a lot of the village signs around here. And it's been there ever since, and it's the most photographed sign ever, I should think. <laughs> Hopefully you'll recognise the black water pump, and the significance of the post spots will be revealed later on the town trail. Now look at those timber buildings to your left. These were built between 1700 and 1751. The one on the right actually was where the uh, very famous surgeon Sir Henry Thompson was born and became surgeon to Queen Victoria and the Emperor Napoleon III and uh, specialised in them um, in the operations and diseases of the urinary tract which is a family was claimed to flame in the medical world. I think it must be time now for a coffee break. You have several choices. If it's market day, then Gosha Hobson's Over the Moon is well worth trying. There's the Crown, which we're visiting presently, or else the intriguingly named Dancing Goat Cafe, which is towards the top left of Market Hill. I tried grilling Helen Walters to find out quite why the goat is dancing. Oh, now there's a long story, which I can't really remember. Um, something about a goat herd on the Italian hills who accidentally dropped a few coffee beans into the goat's water, which was being warmed by the sun, and on drinking the water, the goats started to dance. I think that's the story. <laughs> Yes, it's a really welcoming little cafe, we like to think, and we have a lot of very friendly regulars, and then people who come on holiday seem to like it too, so that's the dancing goat. I come from Hungary, and I'm really used to nice espresso, you know, this real strong stuff. You don't think of England as, as the place for espresso, but it is, it's changed. I don't know if it's the low-cost flights, or I don't know what it is, but English people seem to have quite a demand for espresso coffee and the goat's coffee. Yeah, yeah.